This is chapter four, Brooks Lingua Faction, in six minutes, 40 seconds. From sequence to arrangement as pattern. Quote, the canon of arrangement is the one where concerns of discourse and space interact, unquote. J. Bolter, page 92. Thinking of Brooks' assertions, and extended from his inclusion of a quote of Derrida's of grammatology in which Derrida states, quote, the property of the sign is not to be an image, unquote, a chronological narrative is limited by the text and or the reader's imagination to extend whatever spatial metaphors are contained wherein. In other words, we are limited by our sight of the printed page. 93. With new technologies, we no longer have to rely on a linear sequence or arrangement. Now we rely on pattern and how said pattern is arranged not just with visuals and text, but how the arrangement of data on a particular web page, when rearranged, affects meaning. An example of this is a world cloud image. Arrangement no longer relies on sequence, the old linearity that the classical canons of rhetoric relied upon, and the classical rhetoricians such as Plato relied on this linearity partially because of the limited mediums available and the contextual values placed on writing versus speech, and so on, made the process of text necessary. Because of these limitations, Brooke argues that our new technologies of tagging, database searches, and the multiple relationships that different interfaces have with other patterns in databases, whether that be Facebook ads generated by the profile's selected likes, or browser searches. These patterns now emerge, patterns whose arrangements make possible multiple narratives resultant of how these patterns and arrangements interconnect and change one another. Although this relationship Brooke describes seem, seems abstract, we rely on and are persuaded by these interconnections whenever we interact with these databases online. And, contrary to Manovich's opinion that databases dematerialize narratives, page 99, Brooke asserts quite effectively that the data that creates these databases are constructed of multiple narratives, which, when you interact with said database, manipulate your own syntagm or narrative, 99. The presence of narratives negate the idea of new technologies as inhuman. As an example of how databases interconnect with the multiple narratives of others, Brooke examines how the profit-motivated database of Amazon.com connects buyers of a particular text with recommendations of other texts to purchase, 99. Without this database's fed narratives of other customers' purchasing patterns and reviews, would these recommendations be possible? As such, Brooke considers this a type of narrative, albeit a bit boring. Email accounts and the search tools provided within interfaces such as Hotmail, Gmail, and the like can also serve analogous to Brooke's example of narrative and database as not being exclusive of the other. 304. For example, I created my Hotmail account approximately 10 years ago. Initially, my use of email was limited to my needs of communication and is based on my historical interaction with technology. My relationship with my email account changed dramatically after my first hard drive went defunct. Uh, that computer was basically a boat anchor after that point. And since then, I have lost so many hard drives in the last 10 years that, as a means of catharsis, I began taking them physically apart and reconstructing them as wind chimes. The narrative of a wind chime versus the possibilities of narrative from that particular defunct hard drive eventually became less therapeutic and more reflexively sardonic, so I disassembled them, though still cannot bear to part with all the pieces. Such data really increases the feeling of loss and mourning in which you created narratives or whatever data you had on there was quite meaningful, meaningful enough to save. Despite losing numerous hard drives full of photographs, writings, videos, and audio recordings, 
I still have over a decade of Hotmail messages, and along with these textual narratives, the file attachments, such texts chaperoned with photos, videos, audio files, and whatever else you can assimilate into an email attachment. Ten years in human time does indeed have a mutually changing relationship with web time and all the artifacts that exist wherein. I have emails from mentors, families, friends, many of whom are now dead in the literal sense. Other emails I've saved are more utilitarian in nature, perhaps details for a new contact, or information about a new colloquium. Regardless, I rely on my email database when creating narratives, as well as creating new narratives not completely possible prior to the advent of search tools within email databases and other fed databases such as Wordle, Flickr, and Google Drives. Since losing six hard drives within the time of 2002 and 2008, and in, within what I say by hard drives, I'm not even counting the three iPhones I have lost within the last year and a half. I no longer rely on a singular database of storage, and because of new technologies, I no longer have to. Now I record interviews, songs, band practices, and stories told by my relatives on my phone, um, and then email them to my Hotmail or save these files on my Google Drive. Occasionally, I break my phone before I have an opportunity to save these items on my Google Drive. This is quite unfortunate, as I have lost, once again, I, oh, so much data, some of which is priceless to me, especially, especially interviews with my grandmother who has now passed away. Because of my historical relationship with hardware and how I tend to break everything, I additionally back up everything as much as I can on numerous external hard drives as well as internet clouds. The amount of data one collects and considers meaningful or potentially useful in some future project is unimaginable. Without having the search tools implicit within a database vault such as Hotmail, it's almost impossible to organize the amount of data we now collect. I can now tag photographs, however, with how they are personally re relevant to my own perception, and search my databases for materials and creating new narratives. How these databases organized and or allow myself to imprint upon them particular search tags shows how the death of the author is indeed, according to Barthes, still in play, and is also a good argument for Brooks' application of both the old and new rhetorics when investigating technological discourses.